recording this second video on the same weekend. What's wrong here? Well, uh, there has been one interesting comment on a previous video and that was about importing libraries into platform IO. And uh, so since I also wanted to test the second circuit board which I got from PCB Go Go, I'll give it a quick try and let's see if I can make a short video. So here we have the other circuit board layout which I have. These are five edged polygons or pentagons and uh, what they are all about that will be covered in another video. But today I want to see if the circuit board itself works as it should. So I have taken one and I actually equipped it with what's supposed to be on there. Um, let's have a look. So this is the design in KiCad of the circuit board. Um, it shows some unrouted wires, but actually that's not true. All the wires are connected and routed. And uh, well, the design, as you can also see on the circuit board itself, uses castellated edges. So let's have a look at this, how it looks. Um, so at these edges, the circuit boards can be soldered together to form something bigger. In the middle there is a NeoPixel LED, a VS2812, and we have one decoupling capacitor close to it, as it should be, and then we have all these pads and all these arrows. The five connections on the edges are for power supply, ground, and plus five volts, and for the data line. And with these pads, I want to be able to control whether data is going out on an edge or coming in from an edge here. So let's just connect one of these up and see if we can install Fastlet, the library on this Arduino and get this LED to shine. So first I have to solder pins to the edge connector. which I will quick, quick and dirty do here. So I put some solder on this pin and some on this castellation here, soldering it like this and then soldering the remaining two pins. And I want to get data in, so that means I'll have to bridge this gap here like this. We'll zoom down a bit and have a look how it looks. Ooh, reflecting, turning a bit like this. So zooming down, focusing. So here we have the three pins connected, which now should be ground, positive supply, ground, positive supply, and data. So putting it back here, and now we want to quickly connect it to our 80 mega, connecting it to the computer, like this. And uh, well, now let's see if we can get this LED to light up. So we go to Visual Studio Code, close what's open here, don't save. I don't know if that was a good idea. We also close this one here and we are opening Platform IO. We say we want a new project. Call it 2022 0418. Oops, the first two didn't get in. Um, NeoPixel Nano. 
select the board. Oh, my board is a nano clone, like this one here, not using the default location, but instead going for the home programming platform IO, finish, be patient. Yes, I trust myself and we wait until we get the message here and we go to our source file. So this is our source file, making it a bit nicer, removing unnecessary clutter like this. And now we need a library. And uh, for that, we go back to platform IO home here and we go to libraries. I plan to use fastlet, which is a well-known library. So now you see the search button as well. So NeoPixel bus. Mm. <sighs> yeah, no, this is for, for fastlet. Here's fastlet. Fastlet is a library for programming addressable RGB and it supports Atmel AVR, which is our platform here. Um, actually, NeoPixel bus does that as well, but we use Fastlet. So I click on Fastlet, I get more information, and I can add it now to a given project. So I click here, and now I can choose from my recent projects, actually it's all the projects which, which are known to um, Platform IO here. So this is the project I want to add the Fastlet library to. And uh, then I just say add. And it says congratulations, the library has been installed. So if we now look into our main .cpp file, nothing has changed. So the library has been installed, but it's not added automatically to our source file. Uh, that's, I think, a good thing. I don't want to have artificial intelligences uh, mix messing up with my code. Um, actually, the library is found not in the library path, it actually is installed here under source, under .pyo build in the structure of platform.io. So we want to include, we want to do something with this library and well, an idea could be to just look at some of the examples which are given here. There are actually several examples. I think blink it might be one which I need. Number of LEDs, one. Um, it asks for data and clock pin. Actually our NeoPixels don't have any clock pins, but let's have a look at just this source code here. So now I'll mark this one and copy it and paste it down here. It has its own loop. It has its own setup. So I can actually remove my loop and setup up here and it includes the fastlet library. We have one LED in our string. It's not connected to pin 3. I connected it to pin 10. We don't have a clock pin. Um, we can leave the definition, it doesn't cost anything. But uh, then we now have to choose the correct one. And well, actually, I don't know if it's an 2812 or 2812B, to be honest. Um, comment this one out here. So here you see all the, where did it go? It's not sorted by number. Um, here, these are all the different types of bus controlled LEDs which are supported by, these li by this library. And well, turn the LED on, then pause, 
turn the LED off, then pause. Sounds, well, let's see if it does what it's advertising. Compiling. Have a look here. Linking, no errors. Uploading also succeeded. And it's blinking. Um, it's actually blinking green, even though the code said that it's supposed to be blinking red here. And this is because we have not RGB, but GRB connections. Or actually, no, we, we actually have GRB ordering is typical, then this might be RGB ordering. So where do I find the 2812 with RGB ordering? Hmm. Well, one have to look into the documentation for this. Let's see if we can change this to any other color. Um, let's use blue instead. Compile, upload. And it's now blinking blue. Camera is a bit overexposing with this strong light emitter down there now. Dimming it down a bit here. Okay, let's see if we can make it red by writing green. And yes, now it's red. So yeah, the, the chip here as compared to the library is red green blind um, but other than that everything works as expected so this was a short view of how to implement a an external library from the pio homepage here going back one level we clear our search from the list of libraries we pick what we want and then it's added into our project tree over here and then all we have to do is to include the corresponding library and we can use it in platform io in the same way as we could in the arduino ide but with all the advantages of visual studio code as the editor